Mualim, the funky professor, comes from Mashpee, Massachusetts. He is an award-winning performing artist, writer, media artist, and educator. His work spans the genre of music, theater, storytelling, poetry, film, video, and writing. For his own roots, he comes from family where both sides have had strong oral tradition in sharing the arts. And that includes Barbados as well as Mashpee from Wampanoag uh, people. And uh, Mualim noted on his mother's side, he's a fourth generation musician, and that there were a lot of family influence going on with his grandfather as a pianist, a band leader, an arranger for many years, and his first piano teacher. In his teen years, Mualim started performing session music. As he studied music, he went on to college and graduate school and studied film and eventually went into playing keyboard for a number of hip hop, R&B, dance, music recordings in New York City and Boston, and later started working as a producer, arranger, and remix artist, emerging as a solo soul artist in the 1990s and a mentor to many upcoming artists. And he's considered the godfather of the South Coast soul movement. He has received a number of different awards for his diversity of arts that he shares, including the New England Urban Music J Awards for Jazz and top nominations for Native American Music Awards. He has two CDs, and in 2007, he had a book published titled The Mixed Medicine Bag. Roots have been important to Mualim in his work in sharing music as well as education. He has been a member and former chairman of Education Committee and Department for Mashpee Wampanoag Tribe and Director of Black Studies, and also is a tenured professor at the University of Massachusetts. Uh, when I asked him one of his most memorable moments in sharing his art, he said, once being approached by somebody 15 years after a presentation and being told that my words helped them through a rough time they were going through. And finally, when I asked why share our art out loud, Walim said, the exchange of stories and poetry allows us to learn about each other. The aesthetics of people and cultures tells us many things about them. Albeit in contemporary form, I continue a tradition from several thousand years as a story and song keeper. So please, a warm welcome for Walim. Thank you. It's funny how um, sometimes the paths that your uh, elders, ancestors, et cetera, travel become the paths that mark you off. Um, my paternal grandfather, Mashpee, Boston, and New Bedford were his key cities. And then for my father, Mashpee, Boston, New Bedford, and finally New York were his key cities. And I find out I travel all the same routes. Um, this first piece that I'm going to do is called Temple of a Sacred Clown. It was actually written for my father. Um, I had moved back to New York in 2000, and this was 2002. I was on my way to a recording session. It was a compilation CD called Poet Warriors. And um, I was on my way to the recording session, but hadn't written my piece yet. <laughs> and thank goodness for New York City traffic because I got stuck on Westchester Avenue in the Bronx, and you know, it took me half an hour to get four blocks. So in that half an hour's time, I was actually writing the piece, so by the time I pulled up to the uh, back alley of the recording studio, I had the song finished. <laughs> and uh, what, I was, what the song I was writing about was basically just thinking about, wow, I'm here playing nightclubs in New York, and my father lived in New York at the time he worked for Campbell's Pep Pepperidge Farm, but used to like to go to a lot of the jazz clubs. And um, I was thinking, okay, so if I'm gonna write something to honor him, I guess I should write something kind of loungy sounding. So I ended up with... Um, <laughs> For the 
last 10 years I've existed in the smoke of my own illusion But don't think for a minute that I suffer from delusion I'm that laugh in the back of your mind My existence can't be measured in time Welcome to the temple of a sacred clown Welcome to the temple of a sacred clown I blend with the masters of the spirit I can enter in a crashing blaze But you'll never hear it Just like a river that keeps on going I'll reinvent myself and keep on going Welcome to the temple of a sacred clown 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 I walk on the edge of a summer sunrise I can change shape right in front of your eyes In the shadows is where I sit And if you don't get the joke, you're part of it Welcome to the temple of a sacred clown Welcome to the temple of a sacred clown Welcome to the temple Thank you. Next one actually will be without music. The year was 2000. It was my first time performing at the New Eurekan Poets Cafe in the Lower East Side of Manhattan. It was a presentation called A Revolution in Poetry. It featured 33 poets, and I got to be poet number 28. <laughs> the original poem that I was going to recite, I don't even remember right now. The poem that I ended up reciting that night, I actually wrote at the bar. It was kind of cool. I was sitting in what I was told was Miguel Pinero's favorite seat. So I sat there, and I was about, I guess, three coronas into the evening as I finished writing the poem. And I went up to the microphone. I would like to dedicate this poem to at least 23 of the poets who went ahead of me. <laughs> I am a man of peace, but if I hear one more poet get on the mic and do a poem like this, I'm going to go out of my damn mind. It doesn't matter what I say. I need not have spent all that time in English class. It need not have meaning or metaphor, content or clarity, substance or sequence. Because as long as it has inflection like this, it is poetry and mine will be deep. Why is it considered a love poem if every other line I compare my sisters to the sun, the moon, and the constellations. Why is it considered a revolutionary poem if every other line I say revolution interchanging it with pumping my fist? It's simply that kind of poem because I said it like this. Let me share something that I wrote not too long ago. A gallon of juice, a quart of strawberries, a loaf of bread, and oops, 
that's my shopping list. But I had your attention because I said it like this. Now, if you'll allow me a Brechtian moment. The style of poem, when it, the style of poetry, when it was introduced, was actually fantastic, but to some, really, it was dope. And the man who read his poem that way would shoot it into his arm and fall into a nine over a Max Roach drum riff at the baby grand. So as long as people recite poetry like this, until it is only no longer about style, no longer about presentation or image, and is simply about the word. This one is kind of self-explanatory. Corporate 
Steve Jobs said you arrived, but did you ever think of anyone else? What did your success do for me? It won't harm me because of what they might say. Get ready for the storm. Ready for the storm. First step to solution is a mental revolution. 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 Get ready for the storm. Ready for the storm. Ready for the storm. Ready for the storm. Get ready for the storm. Thank you. Thank you very much, Moon. This one is called Thief in the Night. And the story that gets told in the middle is, I would say, 90% true. I'll let you figure out which part's false. I'm sorry. Let me try a better sound. sudden when I came to this building and rounded the corner, 
a raven flew over my head and landed on the steps of the building in front of me and then turned into this beautiful woman in a long flowing black dress who began to run to me in slow motion like something out of Wuthering Heights. Well, you know, dig it, this was the Grand Concourse in the Bronx, so I ran in the opposite direction. <laughs> well, she chased after me. I came back to the corner. There was an old man standing there. He had on a suit, and he had a limp and a crooked walking stick, and he was eating a piece of chicken. Well, he let me pass by. When the wound came up, he slapped her in the head with a stick, and I really didn't think that was too cool till I found out it was really just a dude in a dress, just something he liked to do on a Monday night. <laughs> Two minutes left? Two. Have two? All right. Two minutes? All right, let's see what I can do. Two minutes. Two minutes. Ah, all right. Here is one. Um, anybody who's ever made, living, made a living as a musician can relate to this song. Or I should say, anybody who's not made a living as a musician <laughs> can relate to this song. Anybody who's tried to make a living as a musician. Anybody who lived on the earned income credits that come on your tax return when you're a musician? Anyway. <laughs> Sunlight streams around the window shade. My eyes open and close to a squint. Rise to a day with morning gone. Reminiscent of how last night was spent. In a dream of a clouded memory. Open up to a master plan. All I need is a few more minutes. Cause this is how the day began Awakened by a noonday sun Shores light of the time Awakened by a noonday sun And I will keep on going till the sun rises next day Out and dressed and out the door after cold black tiles sending shocks up my legs two o'clock found me downtown headphones giving the world a soundtrack copying equality from the brother selling books Everyone knows, but no one looks. Awakened by a noonday sun, sure as light of the time. Awakened by a noonday sun, and I will go until the sun rises. And I will go till the sun rises. And I will go till the sun rises. The next day. Thank you. Why did the pelican get kicked out of the restaurant? I don't know why. Because he was. Because he had a very big bill. <laughs> Thank you. 
Why don't you find seagulls in the bay? Because then they would be bagels. <laughs> At 14, I wanted to be a heart surgeon, caring for the sick and brokenhearted. I did not know about aortas and ventricles, valves and, or, or arteries. All I felt, all I desired was to be a healer of hearts. Not consciously, for who does at that age not develop the teenage lexicon, for it knows little of love and loss? That all comes later. Now I look back 50 years on, no medical school, no cardiology. The closest I came were biology classes of amoebas and spirogyras. Mendel's peas and a sprinkling of osmosis. My path led me to electricity, voltages, currents, computers, and communications. And now, what of the heart doctoring, the adolescent dream? Not needed, superseded. No medical degree, white-coated intern years, for it was my own heart that required attention. This heart surgery took not hours, but years, in the operating room of life. Each cut painful, each stitch sewn by the harsh lessons of life. The bleak wards of failed marriages, job loss. I became my own nurse and doctor. Today, the heart is robust, beating strong, and long may it continue. Ba-boom, ba-boom. Ba-boom. Thank you. tree. 